Hello guys, welcome back. I am probably more excited to film this video than I have been to film probably any other video in the history of my channel and that is because this video is an entirely book focused video. It is my first book dedicated video and I'm just feeling so buzzed about it. So if you haven't got one yet, grab yourself a drink. I've got mine because we're going to sit down and we're going to dive into probably the world's two most popular book series and that is of course Akatar or A Court of Thorns and Roses. And the second series that I'm going to be talking all about in today's video is Throne of Glass. I wish I had my giant stack of Throne of Glass books to show you, but I actually read the entire thing on my Kindle. And don't get me wrong, just like Akatar, which I also read on my Kindle, I have now ordered the books as like my trophy for finishing them. I don't know if that's like super gluttonous, but I'm just so excited to have like the physical copies. And I also think that when I do my rereads, I'm going to really, really enjoy being able to do that on the physical copies instead of the Kindle but to be honest I actually did love reading on my Kindle and I'll go into that when I get more into the review in a minute. But first up let's talk all about Akatar. I want to first say at the beginning of this video I'm going to keep it spoiler free but I went into these books knowing nothing. I didn't know any of the names, I hadn't been on Book Talk. I hadn't seen anything on Instagram about it. I had a friend that read them and loved them, told me to read them, and she read them years ago when they first came out, and I just dove in, and then I was hooked, and my life will never be the same again. So, before we get into rating and reviewing the series, Akatar, or A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is the name of the first book, is a romance fantasy novel, or as the internet has lovingly coined, romanticy. I would say that this particular series of A Court of Thorns and Roses is more heavily romance, so the main storyline is all about romance, so if you are transitioning from being a very romance genre heavy reader, then I think this is a truly fantastic, if not the best place to start reading fantasy books. If you want to dive into the world of fantasy, but you still want that really heavy romance element, this is where to start. The first series of the book is, they say, loosely based on the story of Beauty and the Beast, which having now read it, I think is loosely accurate. It is about a human girl who is a huntress, she's a hunter, and she's taken prisoner by a high fae lord. And there is a shadow falling across the land, there is a problem occurring across the land. Her name is Feyre, and it is all about Feyre trying to work out how to fight this problem that is facing the land. And then the rest of the series, to be honest, it really opens up when you get to book two and you realise there are fey lords of different territories that start to become a little bit more political intrigue. There's a war. It's truly, honestly, incredible series. And I would give the entire series an absolute five-star read, five-star experience. I will truly never be the same again after having read these books. Book one, there is a lot of commentary online about saying that book one is much harder to read, book one is harder to get into. Personally, I genuinely loved it right from the outset. I loved every single one of the books in this series, but this one is definitely laying the foundation for the rest of the books because you haven't met all of the main characters once you've finished book one. So it's definitely a series experience, but that is book one. Book two, A Court of Mist and Fury. I think this is a very popular opinion, but this was absolutely my favorite book of the series. And I don't know whether I can go as far as saying like my favorite book that I've ever read. It feels hard to say that when there are so many fantastic books out there, but no book has ever sucked me in quite like this before. I absolutely gobbled this up. I couldn't put it down. Cameron will attest to the fact that like, I just got irritated anytime anything took me away from reading this book. Reading the entire series to be honest, but especially reading this book. And this is where we really meet some of the real key players in the rest of the series. And the romance element of the books just really kicks it up a notch. The other thing that I will say about these books is that these are adult fantasy books and there is elements of spice in these books. The spice rating on this I'd probably say is like a one or a zero, maybe like a one spice level in this one. This then cranks it up a little bit more and you're probably looking at more of a spice level of like a three. I will say whilst I'm ranking these spice levels, obviously everybody's appetite for spice is a little bit different and some people find it very uncomfortable. Some people really love it. It just totally depends on your preference. This next book, Wings and Ruin, is definitely the most plot heavy book of the series. So the romance takes a little bit of back seat. There's a war, there's a lot more politics and game playing, and I really loved this book. I have to be honest, I really don't like war. I don't like reading about war, I don't like seeing war on television, but I really, really enjoyed this book. And I love the war elements, I love the political elements, and the romance is obviously still in there. And truly loved it, I would like 100% another five star read for me. The next book, A Court of Frost and Starlight. As you can see, this one is much shorter. This is a little novella, which really ends 
this what I would call trilogy because these first three books are all written in the point of view of Feyre and this is the first book where we start getting sections written in lots of different people's point of view and really this book some people didn't enjoy it some people say it was a bit of a snooze personally again maybe I'm being a bit too much of a fangirl of this series but I genuinely really love this book largely because I just think it felt so much like the like holiday episode of your favourite series on TV after the ending of Wings and Ruin which is is such an intense book in general just end to end it's a super intense book at the ending of this book I just feel like we all need a breather and if you binge this book series the way I did when I got to the end of that to be able to just like relax and be with all the characters after war and see how they all start to heal from all of the aftermath and just take a breath I think it's such a lovely way to do that and it bridges the gap really nicely as I mentioned because it starts introducing all of the other characters' points of view outside of just Feyre's that you get in these first three books before you then head on to A Court of Silver Flames. I also think that this book has a little bit more controversy around it. First of all, the spice level in this book is very high. Again, I know that everybody's personal preference is different and everybody's experience levels with reading spice is different. For me, I thought this was quite high. This was definitely the spiciest book that I've ever read. Um, I don't know if that makes me a rookie or if actually this is a really spicy book, but what I will say is, is that the spice in this book is quite integral to the plot. So I have seen some people try and work out which chapters to read if you don't want to read The Spice and I think I probably just wouldn't bother with this book if you're not going to read The Spice because it is quite important. So this book, A Court of Silver Flames, actually follows Feyre's sister's journey and experience and Feyre's sister is honestly largely a pretty unlikable character throughout all of the other books and it's for a good chunk of this book as well but I have to say I absolutely love this. I know some people say they DNF'd it and just like couldn't stick with it because they just couldn't stand her. This is a healing journey story. This sees somebody who has a lot of mental health challenges, who has a lot of built up anger and resentment at the world and watching her kind of come back to life and heal through this book I thought was genuinely such a magical thing and I think if you really stick with it and uh, like I said I didn't have any issue sticking with it I thought the I thought the book was absolutely fantastic but especially when you get to the end and you really get to see that journey all the way through brilliant I just thought it was absolutely brilliant so all that to say as I said right at the beginning for me this was a total five-star experience I thought every single one of these books was absolutely brilliant I think Sarah J Maas can almost do no wrong and if you want to get into the world of fantasy this is absolutely the perfect series to give you a good introduction into the world the fantasy elements are relatively relatively simple to follow. The romance stuff is really heavy but there's still such a good plot that keeps you racing through the entire series. And yeah, loved, loved, loved. I probably think about the characters from these books at least five times a day. At least five times. I literally, I'm obsessed. I can't stop. And what I will also say is don't go onto BookTok. Avoid the book side of Instagram until you've read all of these. Try and keep it as spoiler free as you possibly can because it makes for such a special experience. And then race to book talk, look at all the fan art, listen to all the songs that have been created that represent the feeling you get when you read these books. There's just such a joyous world of fandom out there on these books that I've also absolutely loved diving into. And the last thing I'll say about these books is that I absolutely love a book with a total badass female lead and lots of hunky men that I can swoon over thousands of pages. Which leads me on very nicely to the second series that we're going to talk about, which I don't have lots of cool books to show you, but that is Throne of Glass. Oh, Throne of Glass can only really be considered a smash hit with over 12 million copies sold worldwide and over 2 billion views on TikTok. The series spans over 4,912 pages. The Throne of Glass series begins with Selena Sardothian, who is the world's most notorious assassin. She is summoned by the king to compete for her freedom in a competition against 23 murderers, thieves and warriors from across the realm. But it soon becomes obvious that there is something evil lurking in the castle and her fight for her freedom becomes more about a fight for survival. Think the most epic chosen family, enemies to lovers, epic battles, mind-blowing magic. And truly, that is all the plot info you need to get started. So, Throne of Glass is the second Sarah J Maas series that I read. I started with Akatar and I then read Throne of Glass. I know there is a lot online about which series of hers you should read and in which order. Personally, I really recommend starting with Akatar as your introduction to fantasy. 
if you haven't read a lot of fantasy before and then moving on to throne of glass if you've read a lot of fantasy in the past and you aren't so keen on the romance elements then start with throne of glass if you're feeling like you are already raring to go in the fantasy genre because throne of glass is a truly phenomenal fantasy experience there are seven books in the throne of glass series and the seven books are throne of glass crown of midnight air of fire queen of shadows empire of storms tower of dawn and kingdom of ash now there is also a lot of controversy about where to read the prequel to the book assassin's blade some people say because it's a prequel you should read it first sarah j mass herself says you should read it after crown of midnight but you could also read it after air of fire if you would like to i made the bold decision and i don't know if it was really the right decision but i made the bold decision to not read it until the very end of all of the books now the problem with not reading it until the very end is that of course you lose a certain element of richness. You miss out on an entire book's worth of context and history and emotions that will only add to the depth of you enjoying the series. But I didn't feel like I could justify reading it first because that first book or the prequel book, Assassin's Blade, is split up into lots of short stories. And lots of people say if you start with that, it's too disjointed and you won't really be able to dive into the series in the appropriate way. And a lot of people that started with Assassin's Blade ended up DNFing the entire series and not diving into the rest of the books, which is such a loss because it is so worth it, this entire series. The challenge with the official position where you should read the book after Crown of Midnight is that the first two books are a little slow. I would say that with Akatar, I genuinely thought every single book was fantastic. Whereas Throne of Glass, I struggled with. If you guys watch my other vlogs, you watch me talk about the book. I genuinely found it a little bit difficult to get through. I am willing to blame a large chunk of that on the fact that I listened to the audiobook of Throne of Glass instead of reading it. And maybe if I'd read it, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. I think I'm just learning through this book journey I'm on. The audiobooks are just not for me. I love being able to kind of hear them in the right voice and like put the right tone or whatever it is on those, on the characters, the way they speak and like the way they move, the way they feel. I don't know, there's something about audiobook voices that just really throw me off my instincts. But I also think that whilst Akatar is an adult series, Throne of Glass is YA, so it is young adult and you can tell that Throne of Glass is well first of all Sarah was so young she was literally a teenager when she wrote Throne of Glass so of course her writing has matured over time and evolved over time and she's an absolute genius that she could write a book like that when she was a teenager anyway but the writing just wasn't quite right for me and Throne of Glass was a little bit more of a struggle and after Crown of Midnight is when things start to really pick up and it's so hard to then go back in time to read the prequel so I just made the decision that I wanted to just push on get through the series and then afterwards I basically read the prequel Assassin's Blade before I did my inevitable second read of the series so that is my plan I actually still haven't read Assassin's Blade yet but I am going to read it as a genuine prequel before I then do my second reread which is inevitable I loved the series so much the second debate is whether to do this thing called a tandem read now there are two books in the series Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn which you can read in tandem a concept which was invented by I don't know the geniuses out there on the internet that have gone through and worked out which chapters of those two books you can read at the same time to basically make those two books one giant huge book instead of two rather chunky books. There are lots of people online that say you should just read the books as the author intended them one after the other. I actually went for the tandem read and I absolutely loved it. I especially think if you are planning to read these books on your Kindle, which considering how chunky these books are, personally, I loved being able to read these on my Kindle. Reading them on the Kindle was the easiest thing in the world because I didn't need to like mark chapters and like find the right page that I'm up to. You literally can just click between them. So I could literally just like click on one, start reading from where I was up to and then come back and click on the other. And it was just the simplest process. And I really loved it. I loved Empire of Storms. I also really loved Tower of Dawn. I know a lot of people struggle with that book in the series. It follows a particular subset of characters, which some people aren't as much of a fan of. Tower of Dawn is also set in a completely different part of the world. So you're learning about a new environment. You're learning about new characters. You're learning about a new like culture and types of magic. And I just thought it was a, tr a really spectacular book. Like just as a standalone novel, it was really, really spectacular. I will also say about Throne of Glass that the romance elements are much lighter. There is still romance in there, especially in the later books. There's a lot more kind of tension between like who's going to get together and who's not going to get together and who's in love and who's not in love. But in terms of spice levels, the entire series is very, very low. There's almost no spice in the entire series, I felt like. 
but there is still love interest, there is still romance, there is still that kind of connection and there's definitely bits of like enemies to lovers in there. But yeah, I highly recommend the entire Throne of Glass series, so much so that I literally got through that entire series in three weeks, which is absolutely obscene and I'm honestly not that fast of a reader either. It just goes to show that I had done absolutely nothing this month apart from read Sarah's work and my goodness, is she a genius. I'll actually put a clip in here of me sending a video to Cameron after I finished Kingdom of Ash and I just burst into tears. I actually didn't cry once throughout the entire series, but like the adrenaline my body was running on, I don't know how I suppressed the tears. And then actually it was when I got to the end of the acknowledgements. It was her acknowledgements at the end of the book when I finished Kingdom of Ash. It just ruined me. <laughs> I just, there's something about hearing from the author that created these bodies of work. Once you finish them, or once you've been through the experience that they like created for you, it just sent me over the edge. So, so here's me being an actual loser. I finished my book. <laughs> it was good. It was the acknowledgements at the end. <laughs> the acknowledgements that the author wrote at the end of the book. That was such an experience. Yeah, that was good. That was probably one of the best, maybe the best book series I've ever read. Wow. <laughs> oh, what a wild ride. Wow. Now I need to go and like sleep for a week. Well, there you have it. Evidence that your world will never be the same once you enter the universe of these books. I would almost find it impossible to rate and rank each of the books in the Throne of Glass series independently because to me it's one experience. You just have to read the entire thing and just truly get completely absorbed. I also flew through them. I wasn't even really sure where one book's finished and the next one began again thanks to my kindle so i'm thinking that when i have my reread i'll be able to kind of soak them up more as like individual novels and really enjoy them in like the chunks that they were intended but my goodness has it been weird trying to adjust back into normal life after finishing those two series but yes that is everything that i read in march which brings me to talking about my tbr for april because i am excited I feel like these books have totally reignited my love for reading again and I am so ready for all the good stuff that I want to read in April. My problem now is I just want to cancel any plans I've ever made with anyone and just read because I just feel like there's this whole new world out there for me to discover and I just want to like read and read and read and read. But next on my list is Crescent City. So Crescent City is the third series in the Sarah J Mass universe. I will do a full review of the series once I have finished it, but I will give you a little bit of a taster of how I'm doing. So I'm currently 375 pages into the first of the series, which is called House of Earth and Blood. Everyone warned me that for this third series, it was much harder to get into than the other two series and that the world building was a lot more intense. It was a lot more complex, the world that they're living in. And I was, hopeful enough and maybe arrogant enough to go no like i'm not gonna find it overwhelming i'm gonna just be just fine like i'm so obsessed with these books like i understand sarah i'm gonna dive into these i'm gonna love it right from the get-go i was wrong guys i was wrong everybody said it takes 200 pages to get into the first book because there's just so much world building in those first 200 pages i would say it's more like 300 pages of world building before i got into it and I genuinely nearly didn't finish it. I nearly DNF'd it like 150 pages or something. I was like, no, I refused. I refused for the sake of the other books that I love so much to do that because I know that once you get to the end of the Crescent City series, there are, again, I'm not there yet, but I know that some of these worlds of Sarah's start colliding, which I cannot fathom because these book series are all in completely different universes. But I guess if Marvel can do it, so can Sarah. And I think there is, multiverse kind of stuff going to be happening which the thrill that gives me is so much so i knew i had to plow on i knew i had to get through it and i am now 375 pages into book one and it's really starting to pick up and i'm really starting to enjoy it i think the thing about crescent city that makes it hard to get into is that it's a completely different vibe to the other two series this is a world where technology and magic both coexist so it's a lot more modern day the other two books are kind of like i don't know like medieval england kind of time i could probably google when it actually feels like it's set but it's a lot more like definitely no technology chain mail and swords and people are heating water over a fire that kind of a vibe and it's like fairies in the woods and it's magical and it's wonderful 
these books, you then have guns and mobile phones and television screens, and you've got like baseball teams and stadiums and clubs and bars, and it's a proper like modern day city that also has magical beings living in it. It's also definitely the most adult of all of her series. So like there's a lot more swearing and foul language and, and like people are taking recreational drugs and like following sports teams. And it's just, people go to university. Like it's a full on modern day city with magic in it, as I said. And that just kind of like gave me a bit of whiplash. It like took me a minute to get my head around that. And like I said, there is so much world building. It feels so complex and complicated in the first few hundred pages that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna need to read this book a couple of times to really know what on earth is going on and to catch all the bits of foreshadowing and Easter eggs that are inevitably gonna be dotted into those first few hundred pages that I know I will have missed because we know that Sarah loves like a bit of foreshadowing and she gives you hints all the time, which are so exciting to read in the other books. And I know I will have missed them in the beginning of Crescent City, but this is my sign to say, persevere. I'm only, as I said, 375 pages in and I'm really loving it. Like all of a sudden within like 15 pages, I was like, okay, I'm in, I get this, I'm on it, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I'm thoroughly excited to finish this book and then also to read the second two books of the Crescent City series that are already out. So there's three books in total that are currently out. The third one just came out in January, February, I think it was January that it came out. So for April, if you wanted to read the same books as me, First of all, if you haven't read the Sarah J Mass series, don't start with Crescent City. You can start with Akatar or Throne of Glass, whichever way around you prefer, but don't start with Crescent City because I don't know the details yet, but there are spoilers, I think. I also would really recommend reading Akatar first because I won't give you any details, but there is a small, a very, very small section of Kingdom of Ash, the final book in the Throne of Glass series that references something in Akatar, which again, gives you like a hint of potential worlds crossing over. And the way my whole, like, I just, I felt so electrified by that moment when I read it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's related to Akatar. Like the two worlds, oh, it was magical. So I loved that feeling and that thrill. And I don't think that exists the other way around. So just if you wanted to have that moment of like satisfaction of knowing the two book series, they don't know each other, but there was like a moment that she wrote in there that I just thought, even though it was like two lines, I was so buzzed by it. So I would recommend A Court of Thorns and Roses, Throne of Glass. But if you've already read those series and you just came here to chat to me about it and have a gossip and you want to read the same things as me in April so that we can chat about them, my plans are, obviously, I need to finish House of Earth and Blood, then I'm going to read A House of Sky and Breath and A House of Flame and Shadow, which are the next two books in the Crescent City series. And then I've got some decision to make. I'm thinking of reading next Bride by Ali Hazelwood because I think I need to leave the fae and fairies behind just for a short stint because I kind of want to give like Sarah the respect she deserves for turning my world upside down with all of these unbearably attractive fae men and these boss women that just are endlessly inspiring to me. So I think I'm gonna move on to Bride by Ali Hazelwood, which is more like vampires and werewolves kind of a vibe, which I haven't really been down that road since my Twilight days. I've also read a lot of people say on TikTok that it's a really, really good, like, Sarah hangover cure. My big debate, you guys can answer this question for me, is do I read Fourth Wing now, ever, next month, this month? I don't know. A lot of people say that Fourth Wing is disappointing to read after you've read Akatar and some of Sarah's other work because it just doesn't live up to the standard. But I also know that it's one of like the biggest internet sensations ever, like alongside these books. So tell me what you think. Should I read Fourth Wing? Let me know. But other than that, I think this month it's gonna be Bride, Powerless, and then maybe the Cruel Prince series as well. So I'll put links to each of these series in the description. So if you want to read them with me, you can read them with me but I might update you in the vlogs if it turns out that you all think that I've read it already, that I should definitely read Fourth Wing, in which case I'll swap something out and jump onto the Fourth Wing series. I think there's only two books so far out for Fourth Wing, aren't there? There's Fourth Wing and then Iron Flame. And then didn't she like just release, like literally yesterday or something, that what was it called? Like Onyx Shadow or something? I'm gonna get that wrong. But I think there's a third book coming out next year. So maybe I should wait a little bit so that I can binge them. I think what I'm learning is I love a series. I love a series. I'm loving fantasy. I'm loving romance. I'm not ready to exit that genre anytime soon. Not just yet. Oh, anyway, that is definitely enough rambling from me. Let me know if you guys also <laughs> love the book chat as much as I do. I feel like I could talk about books forever, forever and ever and ever and never get bored. If you haven't read them yet, 
I implore you, go and give Akatar a try, go and give Throne of Glass a try. If you fully get through the first few books and it's not for you, it doesn't have to be for you. I think that's the other thing about the book talk world, is that I've seen some people read the first book of Akatar and start the second and they go, I'm just not feeling it and I wanna stop, but I feel like this internet pressure to love these books. If they're not for you, they're not for you. You do not have to like what some other people like. We are all different, we all have different tastes. Equally, I think the flip side of the coin is if you like being a fangirl, there is nothing wrong with liking the stuff that's like a little bit cheesy and a bit girly and I don't know, whatever sometimes derogatory terms I think get thrown around, I think it's okay to like what you like and to not like what you don't like. But I absolutely love these series and I highly recommend get on it if you haven't read it. And if you have read it, please chat to me in the comments, send me DMs, I wanna talk about them endlessly. But yes, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have to be honest, I might do a couple more dedicated book videos every now and again just sprinkled in there. The main vlogs aren't changing but I just love talking about this stuff so much that it feels a shame not to put that out into the world so I hope you enjoyed them. Tell me if you didn't and you can't bear the thought of more future book videos but otherwise it is officially the beginning of a long weekend for me so happy Easter if you're celebrating. I hope you're having a lovely bank holiday either way if you aren't celebrating and thank you so much for watching as always and all of your lovely support. I truly cannot wait to see you.